Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting Lesson. If this is your first time taking a look at these contribution margin videos, I just want to make everyone aware we are taking a look at total contribution margins in this video. So we're going on to part two. If you are looking to understand unit contribution margins, or if you want to start from the beginning, I'm going to include a link to the unit contribution margin video in the description below. So you might have to go ahead and start by going back. Okay. But for those of you who are here today for total contribution margins, you are in the right place. Um, as a reminder, if you would like to follow along with the spreadsheet we are going to be using here today, um, I'm going to include a link to that in the description below. And then also you can find that as well as many other resources on our website, tlctutoringcompany.com. All right, so let's get started with total contribution margin. If you've already watched the first video, you understand what a unit contribution margin is. It's essentially the amount that is left over after covering variable costs every time we sell a unit. Total contribution margin, on the other hand, is simply as a total. So before we dive too far into it, I just kind of want to go off to the side just a wee bit. And I want to talk a little bit about a, um, a variable costing income statement, which is going to be very popular uh, or important, I should say, in any managerial accounting or cost accounting class you have. So that variable costing income statement is sales minus variable cost. That equals, which actually, let's kind of get into our formula for today. A uh, total contribution margin is sales minus variable costs. So when we have those two totals, that will give us then contribution margin, right? Now, um, on a variable costing income statement, once we have this contribution margin, for those of you who already watched the prior video, you understand that contribution margin is essentially the amount that is left over to cover fixed costs and to generate a profit. So the next thing we take from contribution margin is fixed costs. And once we take that amount out, anything that is left over is all offer operating profit. Mm -mm. There you go. So essentially here, we're dealing with this first half of the variable costing income statement. We're talking about after we've covered all of our variable costs, and keep in mind, if you're not familiar with cost behaviors, we have a video for that as well. Um, everything, once we cover all of these variable costs, our contribution margin is what is left over to cover fixed costs, and then once those are covered, generate an operating profit. So I'm going to hide these first ones and these last ones, just so that we have a little bit more space on our screen. There you go. And let's go ahead and dive right in and try to calculate D through F, our total contribution margin. So in D, we have D company who has sales of 400,000 and variable costs of 320,000. Now notice these are totals. Usually if it is going to be a per unit amount, you can usually tell in the amount or they will explicitly say it is per unit, right? So if we take a look at what we have here, we have total sales of 400,000. That's the first half of our formula. Minus variable costs of 320,000. There's our variable costs, the second half of our formula. So what's the contribution margin that's left over to cover our fixed costs and generate a profit? Actually, let me show you the math. I've always been very consistent with that. Why stop now? There you go, 80,000. Uh, let's try E. B company plans to sell 10,000 units of their product for total sales of 500,000. Let's just stop here and let's put in that first half because they just gave us sales. So total sales, 500,000. If the company has variable costs of $35 per unit, what is the company's contribution margin? Okay, see now here, they're throwing us a bit of a curveball. They are giving us variable costs per unit rather than giving us total variable costs. So we're going to have to do the math to find our total variable costs for this formula. So to find total variable costs, we know that it's $35 per unit, but how many units do we have here? So if it's 35 for each unit, we have to multiply it 
by the number of units to find the total. So for those of you who watched the last video, we're working forwards now. Before we had to work backwards through division, now we're finding our totals. So $35 per unit, and it says here that we plan to sell 10,000 units. So that's $350,000 in variable costs. So once this company covers their variable costs, they have $150,000 left over to cover their fixed costs and then generate an operating profit. All right, let's try one more. F company has a unit sales price of $10. Okay, here they're already kind of giving us a rough time, right? They're not giving us totals, they're giving us per unit. And a unit variable cost of $4 per unit. If the company sells 10,000 units, what is the company's contribution margin? All right, so let's start with total sales. Uh, so they gave us unit sales. So let's do some math. $10 per unit for our sales price. And we plan to sell... 10,000 units. Let's multiply that $10 amount by the 10,000 units and we get $100,000. So that's our total sales. Let's do the same thing for our variable costs. $4 per unit at 10,000 units. That's $40,000 total in variable costs. So now we can do our formula as previously planned. Total sales of 100,000 minus total variable costs of 40,000. 60,000 is our total contribution margin. Now, for those of you who watched the prior video, you might be saying, mm, there's a faster way. You are right. Now, if you like it this way, um, you are welcome to move on to the next video. Um, but just for those of you who kind of want to go over that last way of doing it, um, we can always first find the unit contribution margin. So I'm just going to kind of steal a little cell up here. So we could go ahead and find our unit contribution margin first. So 10 minus 4. So we know we get $6 for every unit sold. And if that is our contribution margin per unit, we can take that 6 and multiply it by the 10,000 units to get a little bigger so you can see. And a little bit, so you see, there you go, 60,000 units. Sorry, sorry, $60,000. So either way, it works, whether you want to go the long way and do the full formula, or if you have a good understanding of unit contribution margin, you think it's easier to find that $6 and multiply it by 10,000 units, both ways work. Okay. So if you would like some more practice with this and other contribution margin topics, um, please be sure to click the, click the link in the description below to our website. Uh, we have a full quiz and some additional practice problems. So if you need more practice, make sure you get it. Okay. Uh, we have one more video in this series. I still have to go over our contribution margin ratio. So if you are ready for that, you feel like you've absorbed all the material, um, it's time to move on to this last video. I'll include, again, a link to that in the description below. So uh, until next time, happy studying, good work.